Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And we're here today for a very special reason to uh, honor a very special young lady uh, from Woodbridge Township. She is a five-year-old from uh, Colonia. Her name is Armani Brown. And she's going to be a first grader at School 21 in Colonia. And I'm going to turn this over to Councilwoman Debbie Meehan, uh, who uh, knows about this little girl and who asked us to present her with a proclamation before a council meeting and it's a really nice story so Deb you will will you please take it over so Armani you want to come up so Armani you're not shy at all are you look at you stand right here in front so of the camera Armani is part of a daisy group that was cleaning up Charlie Shaughnessy Park a few weeks ago and her and her troop spent a lot of time cleaning up the water bottles and everything that was there. And was it the next week you went back? Right? And the next week you went back, and why don't you tell them what happened? Hold that. You want to talk in the mic? You want me to help you? So the next week we went back, she went back, and she saw all the garbage on the ground. And we don't think that the kids mean to throw the garbage there, but sometimes they just don't think about all their water bottles and it's it's a bit of an eyesore and everybody complains about it so she took the um, initiative to go back and clean the park up park up not just once but twice so what we did was did you see that poster we're going to put up over there yeah. so that the kids see you cleaning up the park yeah yeah you want to say a few words mm, i don't know what to say tell tell us why you clean the park up Cleaned the park up because it was a mess. It was a mess. And what should kids do with their water bottles? Threw it on the ground. Yeah. What should they do with it? And put it in the garbage. That's right. It's not so hard to do, right? So we're going to put up that sign over at the park, and hopefully when everybody sees your picture picking up the garbage, they're going to remember to throw away their garbage, too, so that you can play in the park instead of clean up their mess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be a first grader? Yes. Did you go to kindergarten morning or afternoon? Morning. Morning. How do you like the school? Good. How's the principal? What's the name of the principal? Miss what? Mrs. Hahn. Right. Very good. How'd you like her? I like her a lot. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Teacher. Do you really? Wow. And that's because you have your teachers and you like them very much? Yes. Cool. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. Let me guess. Green? No. Purple? Yeah. No. Blue? No. Pink? Yeah. Yep. Hey. Well, you did a really, really good job, so we'd like to say thank you. And Mayor McCormick has something for yeah, you. Yeah, this is serious. Room. Now, this is really serious. I've only given out 14,000 of these in 10 years I've been the mayor. So it's very special to get one of these. It is a official Office of the Mayor Township of Woodbridge proclamation. It's got all these fancy looking letters. Armani Brown, first grade student, Oak Ridge Heights School 21, 2017 Mayor's Community Service Award. Recognition and honor for outstanding service as a community volunteer by collecting trash and debris for proper disposal at Charles Shaughnessy Park in Colonia. Now therefore, this is the good part, now therefore I, John E. McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge in the County of Middlesex in the state of New Jersey, and in concert with the Woodbridge Township Municipal Council, which is all these great people, we do hereby honor and salute Armani Brown, five years of age and first grade student in Oak Ridge High School 21 for her dedicated service to our community. How cool is that? Yeah. Now, now, hold this. now hold that, show the, show the camera. I think you might be the first first grader I ever gave this to in, in 10 years as mayor, right? We, we don't give Again, the proclamations no, 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 no. to a first grader. Yeah. You're very special. You're actually still a kindergarten <laughs> kid. Yeah, it's bigger than you. You're not even a first grader yet, and you have a mayor's proclamation. Wow, you're the, it's endless what you can accomplish now That's that you've right. got this under your belt. So how do you feel right now? Good. Well, good? So say great. 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 <laughs> Any of you guys want to say anything too? First of all, let me introduce the people over here. You know Debbie. This is Nancy Drum. She's a councilwoman in the first ward of Woodbridge and Sea Warren. Greg Ficar is a councilman at large, means he covers the whole town. Corey Spiller is a councilman in the third ward of Avenel and Port Reading. And Brian Small is a councilman that covers the whole town at large. So we have the mayor and council here. That's how important this is. You didn't just get the council, you got the mayor. You didn't just get the mayor, you got the council. And you got people in the audience watching. How do you feel? Great. Great. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? You want to thank anybody over there? You brought some people with you? You want to come up? 
Yeah. Tell us who's with you. Who's that with you? Ani Yaya. Who? Gadi and Yaya. What's that? Who was that for you? Gadi and Yaya. Hi, what's your name? I'm Sharice Brown. I'm her grandmother. Oh, okay. And you are? Emily Campbell. I'm her godmother. Oh, okay. How cool is that? Is that cool? A grandma and a godmother. <laughs> you are special. Did you show them the plaque? That is awesome. And you know what? In a, in a year, you'll be able to read that to them. <laughs> Except for the word Shaughnessy. I still can't read the word Shaughnessy. Of course. That's pretty hard. Very good. I'm sorry it's not pink. There's some pink on it. It's got some pink. Oh, it's got that pink on it. Yeah. Yay. It'll match. Is your room pink? Yes, actually. It's uh, lavender with the pink uh, border, uh -huh. like Disney. Yeah. Oh, nice. Definitely. Anything else you want to say to your adoring fans on TV? Thank you. Thank you. No, we should and thank what you. Else? And what else? Clean up your litter. Clean up your litter. Clean up your litter. Right. If you're going to put it on the ground, you could just as easily put it in the can. So we have to thank you, right, for all the great things you do for us, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. That is so cool. Okay, now we'd like to honor EMT Kerry Shirley, supervisor with the Colonia First Aid Squad. Can you please come up? Uh, we also have EMT John Colucci, supervisor of Avenal Colonia First Aid Squad, but I understand he's not going to make it. Okay, so let me read this proclamation for Kerry Shirley. Whereas emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical responders, and other EMS professionals play a vital role in the first response and immediate pre-hospital emergency medicine and health care of patients. Whereas Kerry Shirley, Supervisor Colonial First Aid Squad, has demonstrated exceptional leadership, service, commitment, and compassion in providing emergency medical patient care and excellence in the performance of emergency medical services. And whereas Kerry Shirley, Supervisor, stands as a recipient of the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Rahway Paramedic Unit EMS Excellence Award, which recognizes EMTs who demonstrate outstanding service to emergency med medical patient care and to the community at large. And whereas Kerry has announced an honor before the squad and fellow EMTs, the Woodbridge Police Department, peers, family, and friends for her dedication and duty and service to the community. It's nice when we all say how great our EMTs and emergency providers do, uh, but it's even better when other people outside of us recognize them and just validate what we say all the time, which is that they're the best around. And in this case, the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Railway Unit EMS provided Kerry with the Excellence Award. So congratulations, Kerry. Thank you. Thanks very much. You want to come up and uh, how about saying a few words? Uh, okay. Sure, it's okay. Uh, well, I appreciate this, and it's nice to uh, for people to value what we do because we're, you know, doesn't come very often, and I did not expect to say a few words, but uh, yeah, thank you guys. Is it something specific you did, or just more like a career kind of award? Um, I think just a, like career kind of award. They, uh, you know, some calls that you take with the paramedics, and they get to know you and. What are some of the calls you've done that made you stand out? Um, I know it's, I'm making it sound like you're bragging, but you, it's like, not everybody gets this, so you had to get it for a reason. If, I I, if, if Robert Wood was standing here, not him, but if, if the, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think he can make it. If somebody from Robert Wood Johnson was standing here and saying why you got this award, what would they say? Oh, All right, you're too humble. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Snowman, come on up. Tell, tell me, tell me what's going on. Bob Snowfield. He has this. Bob Snowfield from the Avenel Colonial First Aid Squad. You're you're here for, I guess, John. But tell me, just in general, what this award means. You know, the, the paramedics have hundreds of calls every year, thousands of calls, um, and they pick out from the squads individuals that they see work very well with the paramedic units, have really good patient care, and overall good people skills, patient skills. And not necessarily uh, public speaking skills. Not, not, no. not public speaking <laughs> skills, um, but that they, they uh, work well with the paramedic units and they do a great job for the uh, patients and take, overall taking care of families. Well, that's terrific. Tell me about uh, how long you've been an EMT. Come on a little closer. Uh, I've been an EMT now for a little over seven years. Wow. So. Uh, and is this your full-time career or do you do something else and do this part-time? I am actually a full-time dispatcher here. You work for us? Yeah. <laughs> Did we know that? How come nobody told me? 
<laughs> How come nobody told me that? I work here. I work at How long have you worked Station here? Station 7. Um, a little over a year now. Oh, let's, we can edit this part out. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. I honestly did not know you worked here. Well, so, I like to stay under. Like, under the radar. Yeah. That's why I don't know you. It's so when I call up and complain about somebody in, in, in the neighborhood, you You're don't get... You're not going to know it's me. What number are you? 83. 83. I think I've gotten, I think I've talked to you a few times. <laughs> anyway, well, congratulations. Thank I'm, you I'm so sorry much. for not knowing you work here, but we no, have 1,200 employees, so give me it, a break. It's kind of hard, yeah. It is kind of hard. See, see what she said. Uh, and also, uh, bon, John, uh, Bob, if you could present this to John. Uh, cool, you maybe we'll bring him back at a separate time when we can make the presentation to him. But congratulations, Carrie. It's a great honor. Thank you so much. Great honor. Thank you for the Pledge of Allegiance. In a moment of silence, after the we're going to bring all our men and women into service protecting our freedom and our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice requirement that the open public meeting law has been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger published a notice on December 16, 2016. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. It was also posted on the municipal bulletin board here at the municipal building. Councilman Anderson, Councilman Fakara, Councilwoman Drum, here. Councilwoman De Jesus, here. Councilman Spiller, here. Councilman Small, here. Councilman Patel, here. Vice President Meehan, here. and President Delina. Here. Can I get a motion that the minutes be approved from the June 27th council meeting? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with second reading ordinances, taking letter A first, uh, along with letter B, we'll do them by consent. Uh, a is an amendment to section uh, chapter 7 under handicapped <coughs> parking for private property to add a space at Beverly Hills Terrace. And we also have some additions of truck routes for uh, Section 7-24, and that includes uh, Main Street, Green Street prohibitions, and a designation on Randolph Avenue. Can I get a motion that letters A and B taken up on second and third reading, and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letters A and B, letters A and B only. Seeing no comments from the public, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed, the ordinances be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Any questions or uh, comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter C is an amendment to Chapter 2 of the administration, the section of the general ordinances, and this is to delete the section that establishes the first eight districts and adopts the establishment of the Dispatch for Emergency Medical Services system. They get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading in the public hearing be open. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? To the chair. Mr. Small. Mr. Councilman Small. Mr. President, uh, once again, I would just like to uh, uh, thank the administration, uh, Director Hubner, Deputy Director Niski, who worked uh, very hard in this ordinance. Uh, this allows our first aid squads to be dispatched closest to call does away with all the boundaries, all the rhetoric, and it provides patient care, top-notch patient care for people that come down with the of an ambulance. So I'd like to congratulate uh, everybody who played a role in this, my fellow council members and the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Council President, we just want just Councilman one comment. Uh, when when uh, Councilman Small first became a councilman, he took a, a great deal of time to show me a map and explain it to me, and uh, I'm glad to see that it came through the way that you had planned it. And again. Thank you to the administration for their assistance. But I remember that very clearly, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter C, letter C only. Good evening, council president, council members, administration. Tom Maris, Fourth, New Jersey. Uh, in regard to C, uh, certainly I want to compliment the efforts of the administration, Mr. Small, and certainly the fine men and women that do man our first aid squads. I think we do a, uh, they do an outstanding job of protecting our community. Um, my question is, if, with the passings of this, are we doing away with the independent squads? Or are they now united under one 
And if so, how will that affect any money no, coming not from? Not under one. No. Okay. They, so they're still they're independent. Still separate. They're still independent. That's correct. And they're, they rise and fall on their own revenues. Is that correct? I know they get supplemental from the township. That's correct. Okay. Nothing will change in that nope. regard. Nope. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on letter C? Seeing no other questions, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We'll take first reading ordinances, letters D and E by consent. Motion that the ordinance be passed on first reading published in the Home News Tribune on July 14, 2017, with notice of public hearing be held on July 25, 2017, at 7 p.m. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Before you is a list of 26 resolutions. Uh, with your approval, I'm adding on number 27. This came in at the end of the day. Uh, 27 would be a resolution to rescind the renewal of one particular liquor license that we approved back in June. I had inadvertently added them on, uh, but they did not have tax clearance. So tonight, I'm asking that you rescind your liquor license. I've already been in touch with their attorney tonight. They'll be in my office tomorrow to work on uh, issues so that they can continue to stay open. Okay. Motion. So can I get a motion to approve one through 27? Second. Any questions or comments from the council? Mr. Rich? Yes. Uh, through the uh, council president. Yes. I just want to ask the uh, council for their support on resolution number 16. That's an uh, operating agreement of New Jersey Transit Corporation for the provision of shuttle service connection to and from the Avenue train station. Um, we're going to have a designated location. Residents are going to park their vehicles at this location and we're going to get we secured funding uh, from New Jersey Transit uh, to provide a shuttle service from that location to the um, Arts Village, specifically the train station. Uh, clean the site, you know, gets the exhaust off the, uh, off the road, get the vehicle off the road. So um, I want to thank the administration for uh, working hard uh, over the last two years to get this great service together. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, at this time we'll go to the public portion of the meeting. I ask that if you have something you'd like to speak about, please go to the mic, state your name and where you live, and you'll have five minutes. President uh, Gerard Trabalca, Hope Lawn. Uh, good fireworks. Fireworks were great over there. Traffic was kind of backed up, but hey, you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it getting out of there. Uh, this is just an FYI over here. You guys know about there's going to be a solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017. I'm not aware of it now. Well, yeah, it's going to last about maybe uh, three and a half, four minutes for the totality part. And uh, we're only going to get 74% here. But the health department might want to tell the people that, you know, don't look at the sun. It's not a lunar eclipse. It's a solar eclipse. So you could do a lot of damage to your uh, eyes and stuff like that. So not too good. All right. Um, that parking problem over there. Come on, over by Warden Avenue and stuff like that. What are we going to do? I got the map here, right? Maybe you could point out where we could park. Mr. Chewbacca? Yeah. There's no parking issues that have been been brought to us. Yet. Yeah. Okay, so. All right, well, we, how about if they park We're over by. We're not speculating at this time. Pass mark or anything like that, you know? Pass mark or. Mr. Chewbacca, there's no parking issues at this time. Hope Lawn School? Yeah. Next. Gray Street? Maybe park by Gray Street? Okay. Um. That uh, house of worship over there on uh, uh, South Second Street over in Fords, is that place uh, being looked at or do you know of anything about it? Or I'm not aware of it. All right, if you can find out anything, uh, you know, see what's going on over there. And uh, just an FYI, don't have your city employees talk to any operatives that are there, if you know what I mean, you know, because it's a dead giveaway. If they're watching the place, fine. All right, but don't have the city employees talking to the operatives that are there. Uh, traffic study. We're going to be doing a lot of traffic studies, right? Main Street, Route 9, stuff like that. What's the deal with the uh, parking lamps, the, the, the overhead uh, uh, traffic lights? We own some, the state owns some, and... No, you're talking about the traffic lights they themselves? They're yeah, the all, traffic lights. All, they're all regulated by the state. By the state. Yes. And uh, is this reliability or what? Because there was a pretty good traffic accident I gave a picture to the uh, uh, police director state, there. The state, the state oversees most of the, all, all the traffic lights. Yeah, but... Throughout um, the township. 
Can we, if we could get somebody over there to check the timing on the one over by Main and Nine, just in the interim. I know I was yelling about the signs and stuff like that that were up there. They did fix the sign, but there was a pretty good broadside there last uh, Friday night, and uh, you know they sent the ambulance and stuff like that. I took some pictures, and you know, uh, let's see what we could do about that. Um, we're going to be working on the police body cams for next year, you know, because we still got that we still got that cover up going on, right? Not that I'm aware of at this time. You're not going to be working on the uh, cameras? Not right? that I'm aware of at this time. Maybe we get the paperwork rolling? No? No paperwork? I mean, the federal government will give you the cameras. I'm sure they will. Right? No. Not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. Um, okay, that um, GASB 77 about the tax disclosures and stuff like that. And then um, I know it's going to be a pretty... Uh, um, involved thing where you guys got to divulge the amount of pilots and stuff like that and how the taxpayers getting uh, you know swindled out of this money where the corporate welfare is that you're giving out and uh, it's going to be a pretty extensive thing you know let's work on it and uh, the Millennials want to know about that <laughs> okay um, I think that's about it and uh, that's for the Millennials and oh yeah I'm not Tom Maris okay I'm not Tom Maris take care any other comments from the public? Good evening. My name is Ruth Mangan. I live at 415 Jansen Avenue in Avenel. I'm here about the property that uh, adjoins my side yard, which is 870 uh, Mount 1 North. It's, it's owned by Exxon. Uh, my side yard, I have a 100 foot fence, six foot tall, white vinyl. Uh, stuff from Exxon is growing over my yard. I went down, I called the engineering department and I talked to a gentleman there and he said they were going to send a notice of violation to Exxon. That was in the middle of June. At the end of June, I came down to speak to him at nine o'clock in the morning and found out he wasn't going to be here, but I talked to another gentleman and he said it all takes time. Well, this past Thursday, I called back to the first gentleman, and he said he's going to look into it, he'll get back to me. Haven't heard a word. Friday, my daughter came down, we went shopping. She took three pictures of the property, and the stuff growing up on my fence coming over into my yard, and she sent it to the clerk's office down here. She wanted to, I guess, talk to, to uh, Mitch, and uh, haven't heard a word at all. I'm wondering what I should do next. Well, what can be done next? Mr. Landolfi? We'll send it a few minutes after the, the council meeting. I'll, I'll take some details and we'll get so back Mr. to you in a while. Mr. Landolfi, he'll, he'll talk Should I talk to him now? After the meeting. Yeah, after the meeting. After the meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Council President? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, Council We've had meetings before, and I think there's an, uh, a communications thread that I can pull up that I believe housing got involved with last year. Um, once the spring, summer came in the vegetation, I was over there. Uh, there's three houses that are affected. Um, it, it's Exxon, and, and we all know how some people aren't good neighbors. So uh, I'll try to find that, but we can start their conversation. I'll send it if I do find it, uh, Mr. Landolfi. And then you can follow up Mr. Uh, Landolfi after the meeting, okay? You can follow up with Mr. Landolfi after the meeting, okay? Okay. My name is Ann Kozar, and I'm a Seawarn property owner. I'm here tonight to ask the administration to reestablish a free venue for Woodbridge residents to appeal zoning board decisions. At one time, the Municipal Council heard zoning board appeals. When concerns were raised that the council was basically rubber stamping, the board's original decisions, instead of addressing the problem, the administration abolished the free venue. Today, if a resident wants to appeal a zoning board decision, the only option is Superior Court. Superior Court costs at least $10,000. My residential Seaworn property abuts another residential property that's commercially used. In order to legally use a residential property commercially, a use variance must be obtained from the board. 
A use variance is defined as an exception to what's normally permitted in a zone. I'd like to give you a brief synopsis of my experience in dealing with the Woodbridge Zoning Board. In 2000, a business sought to expand the existing building on his residential property next to mine, two and a half times its original size. My neighbors and I gave extensive testimony on the negative impact this expansion would have. However, the zoning board passed it. I appealed to Superior Court where it was overturned in 2002. Shortly thereafter, the same business sought approval for outside storage and overnight vehicle parking, both of which were violations of the use variance his business operated under. Despite knowing this, the board granted the application. I went to Superior Court again, and the board's decision was overturned in 2005. In March of this year, a business sought an office warehouse and on-site vehicle parking. Despite being fully aware of the property's history, including the 2002 and 2005 Superior Court reversals, our zoning board unanimously granted the use variance. My lawyer and I were just simply amazed. Since on-site Uh, since on-site parking was never permitted in over 60 years. I'm confident that I would have gotten a third reversal in Superior Court since the planner engineer basically gave the same testimony at the third hearing that he gave at the prior two, both of which the Superior Court overturned. In addition, the new use variance was more intrusive to our neighborhood as overnight parking would now be permitted. My family decided not to appeal since, frankly, we're sick and tired of spending tens of thousands of dollars in Superior Court to get the relief we're entitled to under the law from our local board for free. While I'm hoping the new owner honors the commitments he made at the zoning board hearing, one, being installing a new vinyl fence around his property, past experience has taught me that hearing promises come quickly. Resolution compliance does not. When the zoning board makes the incorrect decision three times on the same property, something's wrong. Zoning board members are not elected for their land use knowledge. They are appointed by the mayor and ratified by the council. If the zoning board makes a wrong decision, most residents just have to live with it because they simply can't afford superior court. If it were up to me, the town would have to reimburse residents who won in superior court. If accountability were in play, believe me, the zoning board wouldn't be as cavalier in, render in rendering its decisions. Of course, that's not going to happen. It's time for the administration to look into the practices of the zoning board and reestablish a free local venue for residents to appeal. This venue should be politically neutral. Members should be familiar with both our zoning ordinance and the township master plan. The sunshine law should be strictly enforced. Mrs. Kozar, if you could wrap it up. I sure will. Our residential communities are being overrun with business and uses that are not permitted in the zones in which they operate. Use variances are supposed to be very sparingly granted because they make exceptions to what's normally allowed in the zone. Unfortunately, sparingly has not been the experience I've had with our zoning board. Woodbridge residents deserve a free appeal venue and the administration should make sure that they get it. And just on a personal note, what I've had to pay in Superior Court, exorbitant. But the time it took to prepare for my cases was daunting 
The stress, frustration, and physical toll was exhausting. Even when you prevail in superior court, you're not done. You have to be persistent in making sure the terms of the resolution are enforced because the businesses never honor their hearing commitments. It's yes, yes, yes at the hearing, but no, no, no when the re resolution comes out. No resident Ms. or family. Kozar, one you're, you're over the time limit, so. No resident or family should ever have to put up with this for so many years. Hopefully my effort in coming here tonight will result in residents getting the free appeal venue they need and they deserve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Good evening, Tom Maurer, Sports New Jersey. I'd like to take a moment just compliment that lady on her endeavors. Uh, it's certainly not easy, most of us know, that when you go up against uh, a government body, uh, it's like pushing a pee up a hill with your nose. But I commend her for her efforts and continued efforts, and I hope everybody that's hearing this tonight will get in touch with their town council and support you in that effort to bring that law back. That you should have a venue that doesn't cost you ten, twenty thousand dollars to go fight for your rights. Um, good, moving on to what I wanted to talk about, I recently was at the uh, Board of Education meeting, and during that time, I had asked them to consider the adoption of a resolution which would be non-binding, and I'm going to ask this council to do the same thing, at least consider it, and that would be to go to our state legislature and ask them not to pass any bill that would lead, legalize marijuana. We all know we have an epidemic in our community. Uh, it's well broadcast. This administration is doing its best efforts to fight it and to treat those afflicted by it. But to turn around, because I've heard far too many adults and way too many children turn around and say, well, it must be fine. It's legalized. They want to make it legal. We can go buy it. Why are you prohibiting us? It must be good stuff. Take it. Chill out. Well, that's a gateway drug. And I've had personal experience with this through my own family. And I've talked to some of the police officers who are dead set against it. They know it's a gateway drug. So I will ask this body to at least consider and come back to the public and let us know if you're willing to stand against the legal, uh, legalization of marijuana and the destruction that it wrought on our community, our state, and our nation. Moving on to that, I'd like to know if this government body has a drug testing uh, procedure for its own employees at any level. Uh, Council President, we have uh, several uh, policies in effect. We have, uh, depending on uh, bargaining unit, depending on job title, and uh, depending on whether you're affiliated with the bargaining unit, we do have a, uh, a comprehensive drug alcohol uh, policy uh, as part of our personnel man uh, manual. Um, depending on uh, what bargaining unit, you can be covered by a CDL uh, drug alcohol policy. You can be covered by um, a policy for non-CDLs. Um, and there are Attorney General uh, guidelines itself that uh, set forth those policies and procedures um, uh, for our police officers. So we have a, a myriad of uh, policies and procedures uh, uh, negotiated uh, terms and conditions. Through Council President, Mr. Mitch, is that available online? Any of those policies for all of them? Okay. Okay. So one would have to open them to obtain that at this point. Thank you. Uh, my other question is, uh, I recently opened uh, the latest salaries to the town council. And to tell you that I was aghast when I saw how they jumped up. I remember back in the days, and that wasn't all that long ago, that the salaries of town council were eight, dollars $9,000, some coming close to ten. Now I'm seeing on average at least 12000 with our lawyers making far in excess of that, uh, some of whom aren't even here half the time. But with that said, when did they adopt an ordinance uh, to give themselves an increase? And I do remember at the time, too, when everybody used to be here every week, not every other week. So that was kind of a 100% increase at that point in time. Less work, same pay. Uh, when was the ordinance passed, and is there a cap? on the town council salaries. I don't recall when it was passed. Mr. Mitch? I'm not at the top of my head, I'm sorry. All right, I'll open it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? I'm Dan Kislaskis, I live in uh, Wood Proper. And uh, I have a couple questions about the parking lot we're building on the corner of New Street, North William Street. 
building. Sorry, the what building? Uh, the parking lot that we're building on the corner of North William and New Street. Okay. Uh, and it's to brought to my attention that we're going directly across the street with it, right? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question, Councilman. Can you repeat that again, please? Are we going directly across the street with the uh, the parking lot on the corner of North William and New Street? That's correct. Yes. How are we going to supplement the uh, the resident parking that's on the street now? No, we're actually the design is going to come in a little bit, sort of the two houses on the end I have space for them to, to be able to come out of their driveway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the we're not going to be in front of anybody's. You know, we're not taking any space away from anybody's front of their houses. Uh, I understand that, but when you guys come across the street. You're removing three to four parking spots the way it's set up now. And every one of those parking spots is used every night. Let's, let's take a look at it. Okay. All right. And the only reason why I'm asking you this is because I live there and I'm having a problem now with my vehicle where I come home at night and I can't leave it in the lot overnight because it's no parking after midnight. And I have a three hour cap at the parking lot itself. So even if I'm home during the day, I can't park there for in the parking lot for more than three hours without getting a ticket, which I've gotten in the past. Okay. So if, it's if, if you could leave your name and number over at the table there, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll look into it and get back to you. Okay. My next question is the snow removal on the dead end street when it becomes a dead end street. Are we going to plow it up further, or are we going to try to be back plowing it out? Mr. Henry. Well, we'll probably bring it down uh, to the end of the street if it gets into a point where. It, uh, we will plow like we do every street, but uh, usually with dead ends, if we have a problem at the end, we we'll actually go in and remove it. Okay, because the only thing is, is that I've realized that the grade is higher on the parking lot side where you guys, because I was reading off on the signs that you had put up out there, the grade's going to be going directly across, which means the grade on the street's going to be lower. So I was just curious about that as well. On that, on drainage. The, grade, the grade will be higher because it's got to meet the parking lot across the street. Exactly, but the, drain, the drainage on there, is, are you guys going to be creating a valley at the end of the street? No, the drainage will go towards uh, New Street. It's designed to go away from uh, where you're, you're on North Williams? Uh, I'm on the corner of North Williams and Second. Like okay, so it's, it's, the drainage will be designed to go towards New Street, not towards North Williams. Okay, and um, how will I get getting access to Main Street after this is done? Are you guys, because I'm assuming because we're going higher, we have to build a retaining wall? Yeah, what are you saying? Are you going to be able to go through that parking lot? Yeah. Not the way it's designed. It's designed, the biggest problem we were having were, were a lot of people in that neighborhood were upset with the amount of traffic coming in from Main Street, trucks and deliveries and stuff. So that the feedback that we've gotten when we notified the neighbors of, uh, you know, of, our, of our plans, it was mostly favorable to cut the traffic off from coming. I understand from that we're going to be cutting it, the, the, the vehicular traffic off, but how is the pedestrian traffic going to be getting from there to Main Street? Oh, I believe you'll be able. There'll be a sidewalk where you get through. There will be a sidewalk. I believe. I believe that's in the design. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And, uh, who am I leaving my phone number with on the way out? You said. Just leave it at the table over here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Number. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? No other comment. I have a motion that the public portion is closed. Motion. Second. Question. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay, we will now go to the agenda portion of the meeting. And um, my agenda is in order, um, but I would like to add on to the Fort's business community uh, the summer uh, jigsaw street fair. If you could add that and make that uh, a B. And otherwise, that's all I have. And I will go now to Council Vice, Council Vice President Meehan. Thank you, Council President. Uh, my agenda is in also order. I just have two announcements of upcoming events. On August 12th, we will, do, we will be doing our Colonia Family Day barbecue and with a ball tournament. It'll be over in Colonia behind the fire department at the Little Fella Field. You can sign up for this by calling 732-382-0273. We do have a cutoff date of August, 13, um, August 10th. So if you do want to come, we won't take any walk-in teams. So 
Um, we, if you don't want to play wiffle ball, we in, invite you to come and just enjoy a nice family day. All the money that we raised that day will be going to a little girl who had a pretty severe accident, so we're going to donate everything we can that day to her. And on August 3rd at 7 o'clock, we, we, we will be doing our Toys for Tots 5K run. That'll be on Inman Avenue. It'll be kicking off at 7 p.m. You can register online at Computer Score and active.com or you can call 732-499-9199. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Drum. Thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order. I just wanted to announce that on Wednesday the 19th, there'll be another downtown car cruise from 5 to 9 on Main Street in Woodbridge. And I wanted to make a few comments about the ordinance, the second reading B that was passed tonight. Uh, the track truck traffic study was an extensive study for Main Street and Green Streets and has been supported and recommended by the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation for the routes for trucks at or over four tons. Our administration, our township engineer, and everyone that worked on this ordinance, Michael Galen, worked diligently for this to come to fruition, and I thank them as well as my councilmates for their support. I'm confident that police enforcement will continue here if the need arises to do so with this change. And if anyone has any questions, they could feel free to give me a call with regard to alternate routes or any of the discussion that need be at 732-750-9355. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Vicaro. Thank you, Council President. Just a quick thank you to our police department, EMS, uh, our CERT team, our recreation department for running wonderful events uh, for our 4th of July Independence Day celebration and the pizza run, uh, both at Alvin P. Williams Park. Moving into senior recreation, uh, September 8th, and 8th, 9th, and 10th is the New Jersey Senior Olympics. It's the 11th year that Woodbridge has uh, hosted this. Uh, Woodbridge residents have a discount, a $25 discount for $5. They can enter into three events. Uh, so take advantage of that if you're a Woodbridge resident. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilwoman De Jesus. Thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order, but I just, um, item number six, police community relations. I just want to wish all the cadets at the Junior Academy good luck this week. And um, I hope to see all of you that started at graduation. And item number 10, the Byron Arts Center is hosting its annual flea market this Saturday, July 15th from 8 a.m. to 2.30 at Parker Press Park. Um, again, it's this Saturday at Parker Press Park, and that is all, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council President. My agenda is order. Uh, I just want to thank the administration, uh, specifically Director Henry and our uh, guys and girls at Parks. Um, we had an issue at Pelsman Park with the drainage, and it was a, a long haul uh, to get that fixed, and I saw them out there working real hard. Um, and the crews that worked, and brought back the bathrooms to Boynton Park. Um, you know, Boynton Park gets used a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful park. It's a necessity you have, and uh, we brought them back. And you, know, you have the park, and then you have a residential neighborhood, and you know, there's a bathroom, and you made it look like a house. So uh, I appreciate that, so thank you. That's all that. Thank you. Councilman Small. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Councilman Patel. Uh, thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order, but I have one announcement. I would like to thank uh, our mayor, the administration, and uh, all the departments involved in the acquisition process of that American Legion, uh, Nutley Post 471, which is located at uh, 25 Brown Avenue in Eastland. The acquisition process is complete, and in the very near future, this will this facility will be converted into a senior citizen, I mean senior center. The Legion has a lease of the space from the township, so they can still continue their operation as a Legion. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, Mr. President. The only items I have under number one, uh, at the next meeting you'll have an approval request for person-person -person transfer from the liquor license owned by, uh, which will be then on the Trajectory Venezia, Inc. And also I'll have an add on uh, tonight to mention, which would be a letter B, a corporate structure change for Serana Group. Uh, but I also trust by the next meeting you'll be approving that as well. That's all I have. Thank you. We'll go to administration. We'll go to Mr. Landolfi. Thank you, Council President. We have a few items this evening. The first three are uh, bid items, uh, pump repairs at various pump stations, uh, door replacement throughout the township, and asbestos removal project. We have several of those. 
So the final change order in Woodbridge uh, Community Center roofing contract, that's a negative change order to decrease, decrease in the contract amount. Also have a refund uh, of a parking permit. Uh, that's all I have uh, this evening, with the exception of a reminder that uh, we have requested uh, an executive session for this evening. Thank you. We'll go to the police department. Mr. Hubbard. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. We'll go to health department. Mr. Green. Thank you, Council President. I have one item tonight. It's a shared service agreement with the city of South Amboy for the opioid overdose recovery program services. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Is someone handling Mr. Simalukas? Uh, the only uh, item for Mr. Simaluka this evening would be the annual contributions that, that we make to the various uh, community uh, community groups. For the planning and development, Ms. Lesky. Thank you, Council President. Nothing this evening. Go to Public Works, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Council President. We have uh, one item. It's the Woodbridge Township Green Infrastructure uh, Demonstration Projects. Thank you. Okay. Anything from legal? Nothing this evening. Okay, so resolution where Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Parcels and 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from the meetings in certain circumstances. And whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be resolved by the municipal council of the Rivers that the public portion of this meeting is hereby recessed for approximately 30 minutes in order for the municipal council to discuss personnel matters. Following the conclusion of the closed session, the council will leave the meeting open portion of this public meeting. I have a motion to approve the resolution. Motion. Second. Questions or comments from the council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Now into executive session. Okay. 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 Second. Okay. 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 There are two resolutions before you tonight. These are going to be numbers 28 and so 29 and 30. 28 would have been going to the second session. The first is the authorization for the resolution process and involuntary disability retirement application. And the second is to engage in Jersey professional management for professional services in the amount of $13,500. Make a motion to approve both resolutions. Second. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Seeing opposed? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.